An al-Qaeda group in Yemen is taking responsibility for the attempted bombing of Northwest Flight 253 over Detroit. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula says it supplied Omar Farouk Abdul Muttalib with explosives he tried using. Meantime, President Obama is pledging the full use of power of the United States to keep Americans safe from another terrorist attack. But this morning, there are questions about how the suspected terrorist was able to bring explosives onto a plane bound for the United States. Joining us now from our Washington, D.C. Bureau is CBS New anti-terrorism expert Professor Raymond Tanter. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. On Monday, the president said that he calls this a serious reminder of the need to keep up with the terror threat that's facing the United States. Do you think that the United States has been good at keeping up with the times when it comes to security? Well, the United States has focused, I think, a bit too much on the technology. We've spent billions of dollars on the technological side of enhancing security and not enough on the human side. The sec airport security rests now on two legs. The first leg is comprised of various kinds of lists. Uh, the most widely known list, and in fact the list that Mutalab was on, is called the Terrorist Identities Environment List. And it contains about 550,000 people, so it's not very useful. But the most important list is the no-fly list. And he wasn't on the no-fly list because there wasn't enough information about him of a negative nature. But the list that I think we should give increased attention to is the selectee list. It's about 14,000. The no-fly list has about 4,000 names on it. But the selectee list is after you pass through the magnometer, you get secondary screening. And they go into more depth in terms of what you're carrying on your person. Had he been on the select T list, he would have been de it would have been detected that he had chemicals on his on his body. So you need to add a third leg to the security environment, in addition to the lists and the the technology for explosive detection. You need to inquire about the nature of the person. Where are you going? Where have you been? Who paid for your ticket? Why did you pay cash? And those kinds of questions are the kinds of questions that the government of Israel uses in its examination of the security threats facing Israel. And I understand that his father had raised concerns over him. What does it take to get from that point to putting him on the correct list that he needs to be on? Well, he was on the correct list given what his father said, that his father was worried about him. If your father or mother said to you, said to the U.S. government, uh, look, Michelle has uh, been doing some weird things lately. You might wind up on the list of 550,000 people. But that said, to migrate from the, uh, the 550,000 list to the no-fly list, you have to have corroborating information from multiple intelligence sources. You must have to, you must to be, must be mentioned with some hard intelligence, not just soft rumor type intelligence like electronic intercepts and, and the like. Then you can migrate to the no-fly list. But the most important list that I think will be in the future will be the selecty list. That is the list that says, hey, you have been selected for secondary screen, um, screening in addition to going through the metal detector, we want to look at your computer, we want to, but I say go further and do like the Israelis do, ask more about the nature of the person and not focus so much on the technology of explosive detection or rely too much on lists. To understand lists. more behind what they're all about. What about, let's turn now to Yemen. You've been there. You've experienced what it's like. Um, we're hearing a lot more about Yemen where, you know, to a lot of us have kind of been quiet up to now. How much of a threat is al-Qaeda in Yemen and how closely does al-Qaeda of Yemen work with al-Qaeda of other areas? Well, al-Qaeda of the Arabian Peninsula is based now in Yemen. The United States is providing uh, clandestine uh, support or co with covert operations. With I, I don't know whether special forces operators are on the ground in Yemen or not, U.S. special forces. But you, the, uh, Yemen is the next Afghanistan. The success of Afghanistan and driving the Taliban 
of Afghanistan into Pakistan and then creating some kind of an accordion-like movement where the Pakistani army squeezes the Taliban back into Afghanistan fighting the United States forces and eventually the Taliban disappears. Well, al-Qaeda is in the mix as well, but al-Qaeda will eventually say, okay, we can't handle the situation in Afghanistan and Pakistan. We'll migrate over to Yemen, which is the next battlefield for the Obama administration. All right. Professor Raymond Tanter, thank you so much for the information and for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure.